Hello, thank you, thank you, Oli, for uh, introducing the, this session. So I'm very happy to uh, meet you again, guys, for the uh, second session of this uh, webinars about uh, heritage as a creative future. And uh, today we're going to um, explore the uh, connection, the interaction really between um, the heritage uh, sector and the industry and see how this uh, partnership can work and um, how it's been heritage, the heritage, the stories, the past has been interpreted uh, by the industry, is still interpreted by the industry and has the potential uh, for um, uh, um, reaching out um, uh, uh, even uh, more. So I've, I've got the pleasure today to welcome uh, Sylvie Marot and Alan Scott. Um, I'll start by introducing you Sylvie. Um, so Sylvie is a, a fashion curator. She's a heritage consultant. She's based in Paris. She's worked with Marité François Girbeau. She's worked uh, with uh, on a series of uh, ex uh, international exhibition uh, with the Lace Museum in Calais, with the museum in uh, Saint Etienne. Um, she's also an editor. She's published uh, award-winning books about um, the designer Anne Valérie Ash, about uh, lace and uh, the uh, fashion industry as well. So I'm really happy to have you here, uh, Sylvie, with your expertise about the connection between heritage and industry. I've got also, sorry, I've got also the pleasure to have Alan Scott here. Uh, some of you might know Alan uh, as a, a creative director uh, at Johnson of Elgin. He's turned this um, a heritage company into a luxury fashion company, really. Uh, and he's worked uh, in a, a very uh, uh, interesting and important luxury brands around the world, Donna Karen New York, Trussardi. Um, uh, he's developed his own label as well, Alan Scott London. Uh, and he's got a, a expertise and experience in the education sector as well as uh, the uh, um, heritage and um, industry uh, experience with uh, luxury companies. So welcome to you guys. Uh, and I'm really happy to uh, have you uh, again today to discuss what are the archives today? So my question to you to start with is how would you define the archives from your point of view? Over to you. Can we have the first slide, maybe, or the second, the third one? <laughs> third one? I don't know. First, what is the first? Thanks, Oli. <laughs> Swap smooth, smoothly through the slides. It's a, it's a beginning. Right. So, what is the definition of the archives? Um, oh, I begin. Okay. Yes, of course. Um, All right. <laughs> because I'm a girl. I'm not. Um, first of all. Uh, what we are talking about when we talk about archives. Generally speaking, archives are a collection of preserved documents that testify to certain activities. But this term of archives is perhaps a little reductive for what we are talking about today. And I prefer the term of heritage, legacy, memory, etc open up more fields of application, maybe. In the case of textile company, a fashion brand or, or a museum, uh, the garments or textile sample may seem to be at the heart of the archive, but heritage or archive, it's not only tangible, but it's also intangible. And according to the context, a loom, a booklet, a video, and so on, but also a simple discussion with uh, a craftsman or an artist, everything deserves attention. Thus, a simple pair of scissors can be important. And I can add, as a curator, everything uh, can be food up uh, for thought. Besides, um, it's good to keep things, but it's useless if you don't know what you have. In other words, uh, store or to store and compute or to accumulate, it's not enough. Sorry to say that, but well, it's always better than throwing away, but it's not enough. 
So as a heritage consultant, my motto is to make legible in order to make visible. And learning, knowing, understanding what is in storage take time, of course, but it is a first step in being able to create a collection for any enhancement action exhibition or something else, what you want. So, and maybe for, for fashion brand, because uh, this is a subject <laughs> today, um, with this in mind, it is nevertheless necessary to specify that clothes are really, really, really fragile. And light, dust, humidity, harmful agent and conservation precaution are necessary. So, but this is my sort of definition, vast definition of uh, archives. What about you, Alan? What do you, how would you define the archives? Yeah, I, I think for me, the, the archive is the, the, the DNA of the company and it contains all of the building blocks and all of the inspiration that you can use to create things that are now for a, a new audience or a, a contemporary consumer, but it's endless. Uh, and the archives really, from a Johnson's of Elgin point of view, contain all of the historic uh, textiles that have been developed, whether it's or tartans of the past, um, and along with just these words come all of the stories that bring these things to life and what they were, where tweed, for example, was uh, used in all of the uh, families, all of the families around Scotland uh, that, that have their own tweed, but the tweeds themselves were inspired by nature and were there as something practical. Uh, to, to use as camouflage uh, in the countryside. So there are, every single thing within an archive has a point of view and a reason to exist. And therefore it's valuable. And it really tells the story of, of the company. It, it, it creates the body that uh, you're recognized for. It's the personality of a brand. That's how I see it. And if we look at slide two, uh, um, we will uh, identify how you can transform um, your collections, your archives, what you have produced as an industry uh, when uh, it's time to present that in a gallery. Um, can you explain a little bit more about this uh, presentation, Sylvie? Um, this picture shows the first room of the exhibition L'autre jean, uh, the other jean in, uh, in English, created in Saint-Étienne in 2012. Um, in this case, we wanted to create an attractive display that engaged uh, visitors. It was necessary both to evoke and to demonstrate. First, evoke the stone wash, washing technique with slippery stone. And so we displayed in the center of the room a peel of stones and project a water video. Uh, this installation must become a work of art uh, that the guard uh, had uh, to, to watch um, out for because visitors were stealing the stones. <laughs> and then it was uh, to demonstrate how a pair of jeans um, is an object both ordinary and exceptional. The choice was to show them as a bas relief framed like paintings and this simple and effective system created a distance, uh, a material distance, but also uh, in intellectual distance. Um, do yeah. you want to explain as well what has happened uh, with, with regards to the denim jacket in slide three? Um, yeah. And we have the, the next slide, please. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I have to quote uh, François Girbeau when speaking about uh, is this, uh, this jacket. We are separated by four centuries, but today we are united by the material, the denim fabric. Uh, to better understand, this object is a contemporary denim jacket on which it's reproduced a 27th century work of art 
thanks to a laser technology called what watch but it's a it's a detail so it's not a print at such but um, rather an engraving an yeah. itching a burn and the the purpose of this um, collaborate collaboration it was to illustrate a way of thinking uh, i explain i think the best way to share one's past is to show it but with contemporary means. It also means trusting one's intu intuition, intuition, intuitions. Mm -hmm. Here's a collaboration between an art gallery and the brand it was a great uh, communication um, a way to, to, to explain this, uh, this, uh, this object. So the jacket created in only three items uh, were not for sale. And now it's uh, they are belongs to 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 museum. So it's a new way maybe to to speak about uh, not really how archives, but a way to 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 discuss about them. What about uh, the um, example that you have um, given to me, Alan, of these uh, rare uh, wood? woodcuts yeah uh which yeah, sure. in collections it's also almost the same story isn't it you're yeah, using um, an object from the, the the mill from the factory to uh inspire a, a new design yeah so this this particular um graphic uh was created in the early 20th century by uh eddie harrison and Eddie Harrison is the great grandfather of Jenny Urquhart, who's our current chairman. So it's a f in, in our family run business. Um, this is really relevant because it's coming from one of the founders of the company and we have uh, used it. And it was, a, it was originally printed in a book that uh, explained to, uh, uh, to, to, to clients what all of these rare fibers were and where they came from. So there was, Vaikuna and Kashmir and camel and alpaca and guanaco and, and all of these incredible rare animals that are, are uh, so precious and give us our uh, DNA for, for our brand, which is really Kashmir, what we deal with today. But using this as an example, it's a way of connecting the past to the present and we now recreate it and it's part of our one of our signatures uh, within the collection. Uh, what you're seeing at the moment is uh, on, on screen, you've got uh, a Kashmir version of this, which is actually showing a, a, a Kashmir goat. Uh, and in the middle, it's, it looks like a print, but it's actually a woven. So it's a three colored woven uh, textile that's print, that is uh, woven in Merino on top of a Prince of Wales uh, uh, design. So we can update uh, some of these incredible uh, points of reference and bring them back to life. And that completely gives the collection an original authenticity that then speaks to the client directly and al almost gives a, some education as well as to where this came from. So there's, there's real points of view and the things that I reference always have uh, a reason to be there. Excellent. So it's it's really the connection between this creative process, the past, the heritage of a company that he's made palpable and visible in the collection in this uh, in these two examples, uh, which is really interesting. Um, but uh, the this heritage, as you demonstrate here, can be um, a, a way to innovate in a company. Absolutely. And this is something that you have been trying to demonstrate in the exhibition Art of Lace, Sylvie. Uh, <laughs> thanks for using the samples of uh, the uh, lace collections. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, so the exhibition of Dantel created as a lace museum was to highlight a local industrial heritage whose savoir-faire is huge, but the industry is really fragile. And I wanted to make the supplier designer relationship understood by showing the creation process. So by asking a simple question, but who inspire whom, I, as a starting point, I allowed myself uh, a double answer, a dialogue between manufacturer and fashion houses. 
And this sort of revelation in this exhibition, thanks to uh, the samples displayed next to the clothes. And by the way, it's quite unusual to mention the supplier to show the raw material. And I'm proud of this documented work. And the amateur or expert public has been aware of this approach. And I had to ask to the supplier, um, gain the, their trust too, mm -hmm. and get all the required authorization from the fashion houses. It was a long, very long process, but the result was uh, worth it. Uh, and moreover, this question helps to define the concept of collection, innovation, mm -hmm. creativity, exclusivity, uh, at the end, research and uh, development. It makes me think, Alan, that uh, you're a little bit in between. You're a, a supplier in places with the production of cashmere knitwear, and you're also uh, the uh, producer of uh, fashion collections. So yeah. it's uh, you've got these two heads as well at Johnson's of Elgin. And uh, how do you? Um, um, uh, how, how would you uh, react to what Sylvie is saying? But the difficulty to make this interaction uh, uh, aware to the public. Yeah, I, I think that um, it's, it's using the, the current platforms of communication uh, to explain uh, sometimes these relationships. Uh, so within the industry, um, we use the, our own brand collection uh, to demonstrate all of the new techniques and all of the innovation and all of the, uh, the reference points coming from our own heritage. But then that becomes a platform for other people and other brands who want to work with us uh, in a private way to see, well, actually, this is what they're doing. This is cutting edge. We would also love to uh, do something in that uh, way. And so we use our own... Um, our, our own creations almost as, as, as a platform, as, as a showcase. Um, and it's the same principle uh, that, that, that we're using and therefore it creates a business throughout the business, throughout the fashion business. And so, you know, working with other brands actually helps us uh, move forward and innovate. So it's actually the, the collaboration of all of these creatives uh, really keeps the technology up to date. And it's really fantastic. And um, the the connection between um, the collection, the uh, creation, innovative creation of new collection and archives is also something that is um, demonstrated um, in uh, um, the collections of uh, Marité François Girbeau. Um, so if we, we can have the next example, um, Sylvie, you've um, identified a, a, a denim trousers which has been uh, engraved with a, a vintage trousers and becomes a, a piece of art at the same time so it's kind yeah, of it's, uh, a, it's a bit in the middle actually yeah. so it, it's a little like the jacket uh, previously seen this overalls on which are reproduced the traces of a pair of pants evokes modernity this all the pants, so it's called genuflecteur. So the French word genuflecteur means bending the knee as a sign of adoration, of submission. Maybe it's a sign, I don't know, because one, one of the Thiabot's uh, characteristic is humor. So some, sometimes it's difficult to, to know what it, exactly is the intention. But the cause of uh, overalls, the working clothes of the cold dingers worn down to the rope are here we interpret it, except that here the context is changed, of course, and it's precisely this shift that becomes relevant. And the traces of wear and tear are no longer those of the traditional whiskers that the jean industry imposes on their trousers, mm -hmm. selling us the concept of a lived experience and the commercial deception of lived before lived. A new, a new one. And I dare say, because here, um, I think here, it's a little more subtle. It's a kind of mise en abîme, trousers in trousers in trousers, and et cetera, and et cetera. And maybe the femininity here, it's, uh, it's uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this designer 
becomes uh, inspired by its own designs. It's uh, it's a kind of interesting process that is uh, um, happening uh, more and more now, uh, and uh, in the past um, of, um, of fashion. Um, yeah. Can we um, can we speak a little bit about what you've been doing uh, with Anne Valeria uh, and the presentation of her uh, collection in um, uh, this uh, fantastic? beautiful exhibition in Calais. Yeah. Um, I mean, the outfits there are um, personalized and um, I've got something to tell us really, thanks to the presentation. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yes, so de crayonné, which is a term in French, there is no translation in English because there is not an, a real word de crayonné, but you can say undrawn if you want to understand. And um, I met Anne Valérie Ash exactly at the moment when she was clothing a fashion house. Obviously, how meeting took place at a K moment in her life and maybe in my life too. And she told me a story is ending, and I'm a little sad. Sad, and I said, "Well, do we start and be happy?" She has just inventoried all her preserved collections. So it was from this inventory pictures that I was able to work without seeing the clothes. Finally, I selected around 100 pieces among the 2000 item, uh, items that, uh, that he kept. And through this selection, I was telling his creative narrative. And to do so, she had to trust me. Lucky me, she trusts me. <laughs> and I have to find the right balance because it's difficult when you are a creator, a fashion creator, to find the true objects. Um, what does that mean? The true objects it's, uh, are not, not only the original piece of clothes or pieces, but also the garments which tell us stories and convey emotion. Uh, and exhibiting means selecting and therefore giving up sometimes, giving up on items that are not unavailable, destroyed or lost. And they will shine through their absence, but the visitor will know nothing of this error. So fashion creating is a very, or it's by its very nature, a critical practice. So it's um, maybe the keywords, it's emotion. It's not only to tell a story, it's not so simple like that. You have to understand the other person and you have to understand his story and you have to make the, the other person nice in a way. That's interesting uh, to focus on um, how to render the collections and the creation of a designer. Uh, let's have a moment to uh, focus on your collections, Alan, for Johnston's of Elgin and uh, see how you've um, been through this um, heritage inspiration, um, innovative approach, and um, also how you've, um, uh, you've uh, um, presented your collection uh, in uh, London uh, for the Autumn Winter 2021 collection. Am yeah, I right? sure. yeah? So let's have a look at the fashion show and we will get back uh, to the panel just after that.
we want to touch. <laughs> <laughs> so can we have the, 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 the next slide um, and Alan will explain uh, what this collection is about and how it's now in, presented in a very innovative manner. Uh, so I think it's the, the next one, please. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, Alan, do you want to explain, um, tell, tell us a little bit more about what we can't touch? So this is an um, archive uh, blanket check uh, design. And what the brilliant thing about this is that we are now using a 3D technology uh, to virtually knit garments and design in a virtual space. And so the image on the left is a 3D rendering of the knit. But what this does for our manufacturing process is that it reduces our waste. It uh, really um, uh, connects with our, uh, with, with our future development and uh, shows that, you know, we, from our sustainability point of view, uh, we, that we are able to, even in the design process, now modernize that. Uh, so one of the things here as well is that you can see on the, the left-hand side, which was the, the 3D uh, rendering, but on the right-hand side is the actual garment itself. And these are brand new. They're actually about to be uh, the, uh, in selling uh, uh, for our new autumn winter collection. And the actual collection that you just saw previously to that was a, um, the video that you saw was based on origins and it's our origins of all of our textiles around the world. So whether we're taking our origin source points from where we source our Kashmir in Mongolia and China, or looking at our Vicuna that comes from Peru, or looking at our tweed that comes from Scotland, uh, even within that collection, all of the textiles had reference points and they all had a reason to be there and it all demonstrates the storytelling within the collection. But I suppose this is really how um, we're using kind of cutting edge technology now to help us design and also to have a sustainable future. And that's a little bit what you're also demonstrating in uh, the um, uh, fantastic uh, communication campaign that you've had with Joe Hambro. Uh, it's this... Uh, sure. uh, sustainable and emotional uh, approach um, at the same time of your collection. I, I would say yeah. it's because you've got this emotional bond with your garments, you're going to have a more sustainable approach. Yeah, and it, it, it's taking that exactly or uh, taking that inspiration from a design which just which is just a, a, a classic cashmere sweater, which is what we're known for. But thinking about how to right. really connect with the customer and showing the generational uh, connection between the mother and the daughter and also how families uh, ten, tend to, uh, you know, they might hand down uh, even now some of their clothing to, to, to their kids. So it's just a way of showing that emotional connection to a favorite piece of, um, of, of product that's in your wardrobe that can go through generations. So it was just, that was the idea. And that's the next slide. We can see the result of that on the next slide. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And Absolutely. That's so, so this was a, a photo shoot that we did last September. And it's also a mise en Yeah, exact. Because yeah. you're inspired by the 19, early 1960s uh, uh, aesthetic and yeah. uh, Exactly. It was the, like coming from the 50s and the 60s and, and Joe that we worked with, who's a fantastic uh, editor in her own right. She was the uh, editor of GQ for 30 years and uh, Joe came uh, on the shoot and, and we had a great time and she really wanted to show that connection between the generations and how uh, people fall in love with product and they always come back to the same thing because that's their emotional uh, comfort blanket in a way. So for us as a cashmere brand, we can pinpoint and use those things as reference points that can connect customers to favorite products that will they, that they might have with their wardrobe for years. So this was a great way of showing that. 
Excellent. And all these stories, you're um, um, obviously uh, trying to communicate that to your clients and customers uh, in a variety of ways. And I think it's uh, it's also this uh, um, bond and uh, this uh, connection that uh, you would like to develop um, at Johnston's of Elgin, which is quite uh, inspiring. Uh, and perspire on your website. Can we have the next slide, please? And uh, sure. we'll see how you uh, communicate this, uh, these stories. Sure. Uh, the, the, one of the things that we know now, we have um, a real digital channel that is now becoming very prominent in the way that we communicate our message uh, to the world and to buyers. And so using this, it, it's a platform for us to really tell the story and it becomes almost like a feature or a magazine. Yes, we have a, an e-com site that is a selling site, but in order to sell, we also need to have the background and the stories that go with it. So whether it's taking particular designs that were on the left-hand side coming from uh, original artwork from Peru, um, or in the middle, one of our designers uh, traveled around South America and took original photography that we used in all of the designs. So it was all original imagery that was captured. So, and on the right-hand side, uh, this is one of our, um, really one of our um, points of DNA, which is about slow luxury, is that we really take our time and the craftsmanship and everything connected from the past to the present there's a link uh, from the archive to the fashion collection and so it's just really taking our time to explore that and physically showing the audience through different storytelling techniques how we get there and I think that really kind of reinforces our design and, and brings that value to the brand. It's extremely interesting um how this relates to uh, what you have developed, uh, Sylvie, in a, a very um, French way, I would say, <laughs> uh, <laughs> ironic, and uh, but um, um, that uh, a project that you have run for a company called Devred, um, looking at how to use the archives for uh, to to communicate to the clients about the story, history, background of the company. I mean it's really uh, connecting to uh, what Alan was saying. Uh, can we have a look at the video and uh, maybe if we can um, explain at the same time uh, what this is about? Okay. Let's have a look. I need to share it. Yeah. Here we go. A little bit of uh, technology here. Uh -huh. It's okay. Here we go. So it is a vision without sound. Yeah, okay. Over to you, Sylvia. Yeah, Do you want without to sound? Okay. So the the always the same question is how does brand in quest of their founders' identity reinforce its storytelling thanks to uh, video based on business archives? And I suppose um, how how saying that archive it's a powerful we we know that of uh, communication it's a communication label and fashion heritage will never has been in vogue and here it's a sort of um, a mix i would like to say a clever mix of <laughs> a, a long work of research of relevant visual documentary sources of course uh, thought at, uh, so, such as personal archives, photography, postcards, sales catalogs, architect plans, etc., etc. Plus, I hope so, a good work of, write, of writing, <laughs> and you helped me a lot for this project, <laughs> plus a graphic work. And once again, I think it's how you can say the things of the past with with today's world. And I don't know who says that, but to be modern is to be turned toward the future, isn't it? So I think this is, uh, if I have maybe um, an idea or uh, a tools to, to give, it's please don't let your archives sleep <laughs> because they wake up like the Sleeping Beauty Princess, 
as soon as you log in. Mm -hmm. And it's true for all the sort of industry, of course, fashion industry, but not only. And sometimes you think you have nothing. Oh, okay, I'm nothing. Or you think you have a lot of things and just just a poor uh, piece of, uh, of paper. And after we have to find, and I would like to precise something. Um, in this sort of project, uh, we have a lot of um, person, um, the, the president, the, 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 comment dit PDG? The, CEO, the CEO. Yeah. Yes, you and the person of the communication, and they, everyone have um, an idea about what is the project, but it's not so simple. And at the end, the documentation is the truth imparting insurance uh, of the of the project, and everything. The, the point of um, the starting point is always the truth. It's important for me when I. But because you can say, we are, you are your storyteller and you, you tell something not truth. No, for me, the, the real start. Uh, it's the archives themselves. Exact, is the documentation. And after we can talk about it and we can tell a story, a good story, of course, because we have to say, we don't, uh, we, we know that, <laughs> but um, it's important for me. Alan, what do you want to add? A last word be before we yeah, I, I think I, I totally agree with, with, with Sylvia. And I, I think that it's that, it's that authenticity that uh, gives the, the, the value to archives and really propels them now into a context that is so relevant uh, to collections in the future. And the, the inspiration can be endless. It really just is, it's inspiring to just think how you can develop from them. So for me, uh, absolutely that authenticity, because it's real, there's a genuine mm -hmm. thing there that really gives it that um, uh, point of view that uh, makes it important. And that's what makes it relevant. And mixing the, the historic with the newness or any kind of cutting edge techniques like the, the things that are, we do at Johnson's, but also as Sylvie was showing with the with the laser techniques, that's what makes it new. It's the juxtaposition of these two things that makes it wow. And so uh, that's for me the, the, the beauty of this. Well, thank you so much for this, such an insightful uh, discussion. It's been really fascinating to listen to you guys and to go through all your examples. It's It was really, interesting and made her um, gave gave us a lot of uh, food for thought as we say um is I there any question pronounce. sorry i tried to pronounce but it's too difficult for me to say <laughs> <It's too difficult>. <laughs> <laughs> but you understand <laughs> French touch. Uh, so can we have um, um some questions maybe from the audience do, do you have anything that uh, you would like to ask to our uh, fabulous uh, panelists today i can see we have a couple of questions in our q a box here ode uh the first one from uh c traversa i think uh the question is why do you think some heritage brands still find difficulty in recognizing the unique value of an archive to a brand what a pity <laughs> Uh, it's always difficult to to answer to this question because when when I arriving for my part of course when I'm arriving in a project generally speaking this um, we are agree we agree about that, about um, the value of the, the heritage. So it's always difficult to begin a project and you say, okay, I don't know if my uh, heritage is important. Okay, so if you don't know that, uh, I, can, I can help you, of course, and it's my job, but what do you want to do? It's not only important to have archive or not. Actually, it's not the, the, the real problem. The real problem is to know where do you come from? and where you want to go. Mm -hmm. So maybe the, the path, the pathway is more important than that, uh, that what you have. But of course, it's a real, uh, a real problem. To do. And you, you have to, to have the, comment dit, les moyens, uh, le, 
the budget well yes the budget to 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 keep these archives it's not just oh i want to to keep my archive it's a good, uh, yeah, it's good a strategy idea. really yeah what do you think alan about that i, 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 I think with companies um maybe it's just because of possibly time moving quite exponentially fast that they not look back to what they actually have right in front of them that's right underneath their nose and it's something to be totally proud of you know so you 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 need to and i think engage with the history and the past and that's what makes it relevant to the future and maybe going too far out of that framework doesn't become relevant to the to the client and especially if it's a, a historic brand or a heritage brand I think to look back at what is the DNA what is the essence because that's that's what relates to the customer because that's what makes you um, identified in the industry and you play on it you know reuse it to its best and that's where potentially you need the um, heritage sector to support you or um, professionals um, which um, uh, who, who have got the expertise and experience in uh, uh, heritage conservation and, um, and, and I think it's, it's, it's demonstrating that and, and yeah. Sylvie definitely had, had, has that and does, does that in all of the projects that she she works with there and for us too it's about you know having different outputs whether it's a film whether it's a book whether it's some engagement that always brings this subject to the front because it's the subject that is the catalyst uh, to to connect everyone together so I think it's, it's very relevant um, I, I believe we've got uh, time for uh, the other two questions Oli is that all right uh, yes it was uh, just a, a kind of a um... Uh, a, a chip in on the uh, the conversation about archive from a, one of our attendees saying surely the archive is a resource and needs to be seen as that it is an investment in the future. Yes, absolutely, of course, for sure. Um, and then we had a uh, another question here again from uh, another one of our attendees. I can't see a name here, but it says um, I'm interested in the reduction of waste in the fashion supply chain. Uh, are you saving? Are you saving sampling or yarn or both or something else? They're interested in the uh, in the the waste of uh, fashion supply chains, which is not directly connected to our discussion. But uh, I know that Johnson's of Elgin is really a sustainable brand. So do you want to? Yeah, yeah, sure. I think the the demonstration just in the um, in the design process of what I was just showing you there with um, being able to design in this way eliminates excess waste through the process. And so it reduces the sampling costs, it reduces our overheads and makes us more profitable because then we can invest back into the archives and invest into presenting the collection in a better way. So the, 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 the waste uh, theme of course is, and subject um, is real uh, through efficiency, through most of uh, brands, but also from an ethical point of view about uh, the, the use of uh, keep, keeping all of our footprint to its minimal and using, you know, very minimal uh, extra um, chemicals and things. So it really goes into all of the, the different uh, levels of the, the, the vertical nature of our business. Uh, we, we look at that on every level uh, to try to do our best. Thank you. Um, there's another question here um, uh, from Karen Buchanan. Um, any advice for small museums and archives on approaching industry with ideas for joint working? Um, I think from my point of view, um, you need to open the doors of the museum collections uh, to uh, any industry request. And what we're doing today really gives you a few tips. Uh, and that's the purpose of this program, gives you a few tips to uh, approach the industry with a, a more innovative uh, ways of interpreting the archives. But what are you guys uh, wanting to say about that? And then we're going to wrap up this uh, webinar, of course. What do you think? How do you think museums should approach in the industry? Je réfléchis. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Alan, how do you do you think yeah. you've got? Uh, I, I think I think having that access and that 
trans uh, transparency so that you really can as much as possible uh, with, uh, with within within safety limits but get up and close to the products get up and close to you know really seeing uh, the, the detail understanding um, how uh, products were were created and what their reference points were. It might be as simple as a particular color, you know, and what the history of that color was all about and where it came from and how it uh, appeared in that collection. So um, du during all the the the, the, his the during history, so many technologies have also helped in. Um, exploring uh, fashion and exploring the way things that people really love to see the technique of how something's created and that's what needs to be preserved and uh, accessed for, from, a, from a museum point of view to understand the technique. Yeah. Yeah, yeah last word? No, but I agree, uh, I agree with what you said uh, at the first, uh, on the first day, but uh, open the door and I think starting the conversation it's already a start and it's really important. Don't stay in your in just your um, your part. And yes, open. Okay. Well, thank you very much again, uh, Alan, Sylvie. This was a great moment with you. I really enjoyed this discussion and all the preps as well that we've had before. So thank you very much. Um, I, th I thank you also, uh, the audience, uh, for being here today and uh, being so um, participated and insightful in your questions. I will uh, meet you in a month, uh, or I think it's the 11th of February, uh, for a third um, uh, session which uh, will be with the Fantastic Girls of Warn workshop, uh, where we will speak about uh, the story that you would like to tell uh, uh, in uh, thanks to your wardrobe. So a narrative of collection, collection of narratives. So I hope to see you there uh, for another very exciting session about uh, the heritage as a creative future. Thank you very much. See you soon and stay safe, as we say. <laughs> Thanks everybody and a, uh, a great thank you from uh, from Expo North as well. I look forward to welcoming you all back on the 11th. Bye. Thanks everybody. Take care. Au revoir. Bye. <laughs>